So what's the problem with this one? That's 40 days and that's not a pajama. Ah, it's, yeah. um, it only lasts for three days. Yes. Okay. What's it, made, what's it made of? That's not ube. That's yeah. not ube. Yeah, that's why I don't recommend that. Yeah. Ube is one of the most culturally important crops in the Philippines. Everyone has grown up eating it or has memories of their grandparents making ube halaya, our local jam. It's actually hard to think of a more recognizable Filipino ingredient, and that's mostly due to its deep purple color. Thanks to it, ube has recently become the darling of pastry shops and manufacturers, even outside the Philippines. While this can be a good thing for a cuisine that's still trying to establish itself internationally, it's important that ube does so without losing its identity and making sure that the people who grow it are compensated for its surge in popularity. What is ube? Where does it come from? And how is it grown? And where does the Philippines fit in this recipe? It's not only part of our cuisine, it's part of our culture. We avoid all this controversy about who owns what. Ay, ang sarap ng ube, talaga. It represents the unity of the Filipinas. My real first like love of ube was Mitchell's ube ice cream. You know, who, who can say no to ube ice cream? Like, you know, look at me, I'm like ube ice cream man. Next thing you know, I've got a bowl this big of ube ice cream. And so I fell in love with the flavor. You know, like when you have your favorite band or your favorite hip hop group and you're like, oh, I, I know about them before everybody else knows about them. You have like a, an affinity all of a sudden. I feel the same thing. Like other people started being like, wow, that's, that's cool. And then I'm like, yeah, it's always been cool. I want them to have that experience where their eyes roll back in their head and they go, oh, that's good. Most people, they do it when they make something. They're making it to sell it to make a lot of money. I was making because I thought it needed to be made and I thought it was beautiful. Everyone knows bread, right? Striking and stunning as far as like the color of it. And then there's also, but you, everyone knows that ube isn't like, isn't an incredibly strong flavor, it's a delicate flavor. So I had to work really hard to make sure that it came across in what I do. But it is kind of like a gateway, like, right? Where some people look at things and they're like, ooh, I don't know. But with bread, they're like, that's interesting, I'll give it a try. And then once they taste the flavor, now everywhere else they go, I know what ube is. I want to try it again. I want to try it in a different way. I want to learn more about it. A lot of people, it's always funny when they come up to the markets, they're like, they're like, what's, what? <laughs> they mispronounce it, <laughs> like my name, you know? They're just look, sitting there looking, what's a Ubba? <laughs> like, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, so I think it's definitely, um, you know, getting to explain what it is to people and having people be excited about it is, is definitely a cool part of what what I feel like we get to do. We actually do some Filipino inspired breads and pastries. And one of that, we actually have our ube pop tart. So it's made with puff pastry and it's filled with um, ube halaya jam. Not a lot of people know what ube is. What, what is, is ube? ube? Yeah. Where did it come from? So we would always, you know, um, let them know that ube is actually from the Philippines. From the Philippines. We're very fortunate here in the Bay Area because we have such a diverse community and majority of our customers are Filipinos, so they're looking for a taste of home. And for non-Filipinos, um, we just have to educate them. Unfortunately, here in the U.S., you cannot source the freshest ube, so what we do is, what we use is frozen ube purple yam that we get from a Filipino supermarket. So all this international attention is a good thing, right? I actually believe that it is, but let me ask you a question. What do these two ingredients have in common? Let's talk about rice for a second. 
the Philippines was once seen as the center of rice production. Other ASEAN countries would actually come to us to learn about rice development and how to plant it efficiently. Eventually, we were surpassed by them in terms of export and revenue. Each time you buy a bag of jasmine rice from Thailand, what does it say on the packaging? It says, Thai jasmine rice. Next, and this one is particularly interesting because it's still in development, Calamansi is one of our endemic citruses and we're quite known for growing it. This is a brand from Korea called No Brand and I used Google Translate a while ago. And what does it actually say in the packaging? It doesn't say 100% Calamansi juice from the Philippines. It says 100% Calamansi juice from Vietnam. Vietnam in particular is actually starting to really plant calamansis and eventually might even beat us in calamansi exports, which would be a shame. So knowing how these two things are happening to those two agricultural products is Ube the next. In the Philippines, most people's first introduction to Ube is through Halaya. Back in the day, everyone's lolas or grandmothers would make it at home for special occasions, mixing it by hand for hours and hours until thick. This is the same tradition that Marie grew up with, who, after learning how to make it from her grandmother, has been selling it from her home for years. Nagsimula akong magluto ng halaya at the age of 20 years. Natikman ko sa aking lola. Tinitingnan ko lamang kung paano ang paggawa. Natandaan ko kung ano mga ingredients. And then, I cook na. Bibili ng ube sa palengke. And then, ilalaga, tatalupan, kinakayod namin sa kayo ng papaya. And then, I will buy coconut at saka gatas, milk, and sugar. Bata pa po kami around seven. Yeah. Seven to ten years old. Ang naalala ko lang po na dati po nagluluto si nanay. Lahat kami dun sa baba, sama-sama. Si lolo ko, si papa, lahat po sila naghahalo. <laughs> Mga bata, nakalibig na sa paligid Lahat kami nakaabang na. Ako po, as a, syempre, as a mom, gusto ko po na may kumikita din ako. Tapos po, yung tita ko, December po yun eh, nagsuggest siya na, liit, ano, baka gusto mong mag-ubi halaya. Kasi mura ang kilo ng ubi ngayon eh. Mas malaki ang magiging profit mo. Kasi panahon, sabi ko kay nanay, o oh, nga nay, tara, ano tayo, mag-ubi kami. The next day, nagpunta ako sa palengke, bumili ng ingredients, niluto na po namin. Ayun po, hanggang sa... Nagtuloy-tuloy po na hanggang ngayon, 70-80 tabs po kami minsan per day. Dere-derecho na po yung ubi halayan namin. Pag po nagahalo kami ng ube, maabot po ng tatlo hanggang apat na oras. Pero depende po kasi yun kung gano'ng kadami. Pag mas madami po, mas matagal. Gusto pa rin po namin yung traditional na ginagawa kasi dun po namin nabubuhos yung yung ikang nga, pagmamahal po sa ginagawa namin. Kasi pag po nasusorkat na siya, wala na eh. Parang mababaliwala yung history ng ube. Yung history ng family namin. Ang sarap, worth it lahat nung, nung pagod mo pagka yung feedback na, ay, ang sarap Hindi ng ube ba? talaga. Hindi na babago ang aming pagluluto hanggang ganun dahil sa yung recipe namin ang sinusunod ko para masarap ang lasa hanggang sa ngayon. Ube is not just being bought by the Filipinos. We plant it. It's really from, uh, from soil to plate. It's part of our culture. This is Jam, founder of the Philippine Culinary Heritage Movement where they promote Filipino food locally and internationally. The recipes that we have been doing are passed down from one generation to another. It's very nostalgic. I think just like ube, the Filipino culture is very diverse. Ube is diverse. This looks like real ube? I would say yes, it has. No! They add flavor or flavor and color. So it's different from flavoring. 
Despite having something as popular as ube, why is there still heavy use of coloring and artificial ube flavoring? Is it really that hard to find? I checked multiple supermarkets, definitely not gonna find any real ube there. But now we are at a wet market, the Guadalupe market to be exact. We're gonna have a look around and hopefully we can find the tuber that is so soft after. Hey, ube pokeo. Ube. You ube? Yeah. Not here? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we've been looking around for about 20 minutes, and I think we finally found a stall that actually has ube. Let's actually buy a couple of kilos. Could I get some ube? San Puto Galing. Eh, no, 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 yung, yung ube. Ah, from Batangas. 200 per kilo? Yeah. This is from Batangas also? Batangas, Really? This vendor was selling her ube for 200 pesos a kilo, which is pretty high. So I was curious how much we could get it from a farm. Root crops have been staple foods in the Philippines for a very long time. The Aitas, said to be the first inhabitants of the country, have been cultivating it for millennia and eating it not just for sweets. expected a farm farm like flat I've been to potato farms before and this is completely different we're literally on the cliff of the mountainside um, and it's really hard to actually find your footing and if you look at all of this there's really no organization so they really know exactly where they plant things due to kind of like the leaves um, and so they're looking around now to kind of find the ube trees which they know where they are um, and now it depends on whether or not they'll be able to find kind of like sizable ones good enough to harvest Titignan po natin, may mga bunga po kasi yan. Hindi lang po basta ano, may bunga. Ganito po yung mga bunga niya. Ito po ang bunga ng ube binhi po. Yan po yung tinatanim. Kahit maliit po siya, pero pag binaon mo na po sa lupa, lalaki na po yan. Magandang itanim po sa bundok yung ube kasi dumadami po, namumunga po. Ah, ako nga pala si Aisa Lansang po. 35 years old na po, nakatira po ako sa porak po. Ako po ay isang magsasaka po. Na, natutunan ko po ang pagsasaka po ng ube sa mga magulang ko po. Karamihan po, talagang nagtatanim po talaga yung mga kulot ng ube po. May po itatanim na po yung ube. Pag nag-harvest ka po, o simulang October hanggang December na po yun, hanggang January po. Yung po yung pinakamahal na po namin na pananim. Dahil yun po yung bumubuhay po ng mga aita po sa bundok. Sa isang buwan po, ako ay nag-harvest po ng 200 kilos po sa ubi po. Para may ibenta po sa bayan. Itong ubi po ng malaki. Tanggalan po natin ng buhangin. Tansya mo, ilang kilo yan? Ano po, mga isa't kalahati po. Dati po, wala po kami na sakyan na servers, yung habal-habal po, wala po. Nilalakad lang po yung pagpunta po sa bayan pag nagdadala ka po ng mga produktong galing sa bundok. Pinapasan lang po na nakasako, karga po sa ulo, tas pinapasan. Pagdating po sa palengke, mababa po yung presyo. Hindi na po babayaran sa'yo ng pera, kundi bigas lang po yung ibibigay sa'yo at saka kape sa amin. Dalawang salop na bigas. Isang pares na kape, at saka po asin bitchen, yun lang po. Luging lugi po kasi. Kung sa titignan mo po, pag nag po, napakahirap. Saka pag bumababa ka po, halimbawa umuulan po, yun po yung napakahirap sa amin na umuulan. Dadalhin mo pa po sa bayan yung mga kalakal mo, pinapasan po. 
Tapos tatawirin mo pa po yung ilong. Hindi po alam kung gaano maibaba yung kalakal pag ano po, umuulan. Sa 2019 po, nakilala po namin yung Operation Blessing po. Sila na po yung naging katuang po namin sa hanap buhay na bumibili ng OB po. Yung dati po, bumibili sa amin po, nasa 25 lang po per kilo po. Pero ngayon, kahit pa paano po, uh, nagagalak po kami sa Diyos. Kilukuha po nila sa amin yung OB, 60 po uh, per kilo po. Yung OB po namin dito, sobrang... Purple at violet po yung ubi po namin sa bundok. Wala pong halong abono. Natural lang po yung pagka-ubi po niya at pagtatanim po namin. By creating a Facebook page for the Aita farmers, Chef Chris Gomez and their group helped the community get more value for their produce. By selling it for 100 pesos a kilo, 60 pesos goes to the farmers while the rest goes to logistics costs and their outreach programs. Ganda ng ubi sa bundok, violet na violet po. Ayan po. This is kind of like your real jungle wild farming which produces this kind of beautiful, extremely deep violet purple um, ube. And to think that they're able to do this for larger quantities um, is incredible. Okay, let's taste it. Pag sa amin po sa bundok, wala lang po kami hinahalo, ganyan lang po, natural lang po yung sa amin. Kahit walang asukal po yan, matamis na po. Pag kasi po ganyan yung niluluto po namin, masarap po, lasang lasa po talaga yung pagkaubi niya po. Patikin ng konti. I'll just try a little bit. Pwede pong maluang ng asukal, uh -huh. ay pwede pong kainin ng diretsyo. So this is without sugar or anything, just how it's supposed to taste? And when I explain flavor of ube to people, one thing that's really like prevalent here is that you do get a lot of the smokiness from the wood fire, which is quite nice. It's like a nutty flavor. It's like between um, a taro root in terms of its consistency with a slight sweetness of, let's say, um, a sweet potato. Po organic po yung mga ube namin dito. Ituturo ko po sa mga anak ko ang binhi po ng ube kung gaano po magtanim. Para kahit po walang bigas, yun po yung maaari nila pong gamitin din pong pambuhay nila sa mga anak po nila. Scientifically known as this Korea alata, ube, commonly known as yam, is one of the most important species under the genus this Korea, with 600 species, 150 of them that are cultivated for food. It is a perennial climbing herb with flesh color ranging from light to deep purple, planted from April to June and harvested from October to February. The origin of ube or purple yam is unknown, but a quick Google search will tell you that while it remains a staple food in some places in Southeast Asia, West Africa, and South America, it is specifically grown in the Philippines, especially the most purple varieties. There's no written documentation as to when Filipinos first started using ube for desserts, but remains of ube have actually been recovered from the Ile Cave archaeological site in Palawan from 11,000 BC. Food historian Feliz Prudente Santa Maria also said that the first Tagalog and Spanish dictionary published in 1613 mentioned ube. But it was in 1918 that the second earliest Philippine cookbook showed a recipe for halaya de calabasa or pumpkin jam, which may have inspired the ube halaya jam. The Philippines is a young country, but at the same time, we have ancient cultivars. So even before the Philippines was known as Philippines, ube already existed. This is Ige Ramos, a food historian and author. But its culinary use and its uh, 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 gastronomical importance is only highlighted in the last, well, 70 years. That only now that we are, you know, uh, realizing the importance of ube, not just in our culture, but in our economy. In, in America, they confuse ube with purple sweet potato because of the color. You know, it has that, that, that really bright purple hue.
To know more about ube, we drove up north to meet a research team that specializes on this crop and its varieties. But first, a quick visit to the local market. This is probably some of the biggest ube I've seen locally. If you're in Manila, clearly you can't find this size. But what's even funnier here is you're walking through the stalls and there are tons of places that actually sell processed ube goods, like the jams and all that. Some of them real, apparently, and some of them fake. Um, but there's only one stall that we found that actually had these massive pieces of ube, which means there's kind of like a, a weird supply issue, but also like a usage issue in how many people and how people are using this product in their homes, right? Um, these look absolutely beautiful. We're gonna have a look around a bit more now, and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the Benguet State University. Miss, I kind of get all of it. This one? All four. But I don't recommend this one. This it's okay. three days only. Oh, it's okay. It's Are good. you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's, uh, the, what's the problem with this one? That's for three days and that's not a bijan. What's it made What's it made of? That's not ube. That's not ube. Yeah, that's why I don't recommend that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you try this one only. No, that's fine. We're, I mean, we're making a documentary about ube okay. in so all of it's Are fine. Are you sure? Huh? I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> but thank, thank you for letting me know. What I loved is we bought four real ube jams and one fake that she actually told me it was fake but the funny part is it says that it's real ube which is one of the problems we're trying to address right why is a product that's not ube allowed to be called ube i'm so intrigued so we have some proper ube jams, and then this is kind of like the OG, right? Um, the Good Shepherd one, and this is probably the, the most famous one. Like, compared to all of this, this one is really the one that states like ube jam, like <laughs> the most flashy one. So why is this problematic? A couple things. One, it says ube when it's not ube, which shouldn't be allowed. Number two, it actually says Baguio, which is kind of like a geographical indication. So when people see Baguio ube, they think of Good Shepherds, they think of a mark of quality. But because it's unregulated, anyone can call anything anything they want and benefit from the marketing of that city and that know-how. And the ingredients, this is the best part, the ingredients says fresh ube. It really does. So it's a blatant lie on their product. Let's look at the product. Bounty. Clearly some gelatin in there. I think it's rice. I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It just tastes like gelatin, rice flour, and ube extract. Okay, this is a real one. There, see that's impossible to fake. Whoa, extremely sweet, but delicious. I'm actually really interested as to why Baguio became kind of like so known for ube. So I think, meeting our contact at the Benguet State University to clear some things up. Obe is one of the uh, major we are researching. So we have several uh, projects. One of the project is the uh, variety improvement. It's really very important to distinguish the, the obi varieties because uh, the purple obi is more in demand for the processing. These processing industries have a particular um, requirements. They like the varieties that have a small uh, shape. Also, they prefer the deep purple uh, flesh uh, obi. Root crops was once the staple food of the people here in the northern Philippines, most especially here in the Cordillera administrative region. But now that the, that the production of the root crops now and tuber crops now is already dwindling because of they do not have source of clean planting materials, these farmers already are going into other uh, cash crops because of those uh, problems. In 2006, the supply of obi in the entire country, Philippines, we have uh, 30,000 metric tons. 
Now in the year 2021, it decreased to 14,000 uh, metric tons. So there is really a decrease of about a 50%. So this is where you already have full formed Yes, uh, the there bottom. are already o OB that are ready to be uh, harvested, the OB tubers. Okay. This one, these are for uh, seed production. Okay. So now this is already in its uh, six months old uh, OB. We have already harvested some of it because after three months, we are go, uh, mag start coming mag harvest ng tubers dito sa aeroponics. Because I've seen ube plants before where the... Are uh, the aerial tubers? They're aerial tubers. Yeah, so yes. What's the difference between the ones that grow here and then the ones that grow yeah. underneath? For seeds, actually. And but they it's fully not for food. They usually fully mature in the ground. Yes. Ah, okay, got it. Ito yung isa. So this is uh, actually ready for harvest. So ito yung isang na harvest dito pag ganitong malaki na. Tapos alisin yung ugat. What's the most prized variety? Uh, what what do people want to plant? Most. Is it uh, Dakinampa, yeah, Dakinampai and then the Mindoro because of the deep purple. And the shape. In uh, yeah, in the shape. It commands also a higher ano a higher price, price. in the market. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, actually yung oh, yung mga planting material na ginamit namin dito is ganito kaliliit. So yung mga maliliit na ganito, ito iyon ang mga tinatanim namin dito sa greenhouse. Pero yung medyo malalaki na mga 50 grams na and above Yun ang itatanim naman namin doon sa field. So after eight months, ano, re, uh, mag matured na siya um, bago namin siya uh, i-harvest. Ito ang pagpapadami ng uh, tissue culture plants ng OBE. So after a month, yan ready na siya na i-propagate through nodal cuttings. Tatagalin yung mga dahon niya, tapos may iwan yung node. So, ang gagawin, ikat mo into single node para dadami naman siya. These are the uh, different varieties. In Benguet, we collected about uh, 101 uh, varieties. Wow. Yes. But these are the main focus. These yeah, four. these are the main uh, focus. Okay, so now we can taste them? Yeah, we, you can. So yeah. excited to try yeah. different varieties. You don't <laughs> okay. know, like when we're, so in, sir? So sir. when we're in Manila, it's so hard to find mm -hmm. the varieties and then we, when we go to the market, we ask what variety is it. Yeah, they don't even... Uh, People no, have no idea. Yeah, they don't have any... So this any. is very exciting for me. Yes. So this is the kina there are There are five varieties that you are going to try. I'll try the kinampai first. Yeah. Mindoro. No. Sampero. This is grainier and much fluffier in terms of texture. But these two have a stronger, more determined flavor. Zambal. Yeah, that doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be picky with the varieties, but this one, yeah, this one has not much flavor at all. Yeah. And Padihot. This is the prettiest purple. It's yeah. Deep, it's the deepest purple. More water content, no? Oh, watery. So it would probably be harder to work with yeah, because it has right. it has more moisture inside. Yes. But flavor-wise, also very similar to the Sampero, not much. And also that Sampero, because when it comes to aroma also, this Kinampai and Sampero has the best aroma. Mm. That's why sometimes they are combining Mindoro and Kinampai, so that this one will provide the aroma. But yeah, flavor-wise, the Kinampai is the best. So actually, these are the Mindoro. This is already the Haleya. Haleya Mindoro. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So good. Okay, now you know. If you want to buy ube, mm. buy kinamba. I would even say buy kinamba and then mix it with padihot. Padihot for color, yeah. so you don't need to use extracts or artificial yeah. color. That was amazing and so eye-opening. Ma'am Cynthia, you can really feel how passionate she is. She's been doing this for 40 years. She said that next year she's gonna be retiring, which I mean, obviously at one point you need to, but I think it's also such a shame. She's such an integral part in kind of making sure people know about ube and farmers know how to grow it. And that was for me just eye-opening in terms of 
not only the different flavors and tastes, but also the technicalities of ube farming and why certain people decide not to farm it. But I do think it's an industry that has a lot of potential that could have a lot of benefits for a lot of people um, and could just really represent what the Philippines is and really put our agricultural products on the international map. I think the government should be more concerned no, with the geographic indicators of our product and we can actually command a higher price if we can actually designate a geographic indication on our product, especially ube now. That ube now is getting popular. The source of ube, you know, like the information should come from us and not from them. If we have that kind of geographical indication on, of, on our ube, uh, we can say that, okay, so ube is from the Philippines and this is the kind of cultivar that we have and this is like the best for making halaya and, and, and starches. And uh, then we can actually claim it as our own so that uh, you avoid all this controversy about you know, who owns what. With what we know about ube so far, is there a way to guarantee its authenticity, origin, and the tradition behind it? Actually, there is, and the concept has been implemented by the European Union since 1992. Protected Designation of Origin, or PDO, products. With the PDO status, the origin, quality, history, and tradition behind a product is valued and protected. You'll find cheese, wines, hams, seafood, etc. in Europe that are all under PDO. Imagine if the same can be done for Filipino products. It would bring immense value to the farmers and communities involved, encouraging them to keep these traditions alive and motivating other people to do the same and not only focus on commodity crops that do nothing for our soil, diversity, or culture. We would have a sense of pride for local products that would translate internationally. If anyone from the government is listening, here we created a draft logo that you can use if you want. From up north, let's go to Bohol, where ube kinampai is not only abundant, but also revered. We talked to Esmeraldo and Silencio, president and vice president of the Bohol Ube Growers Association, who are third generation ube farmers. Sa aho ang experience po sa aho akin tayo pang idaron karon kay senior citizens naman ko. Ang ube jod, sukad pa sa aho mga mga ninuno na mo. Kwanjod ang ube, mao ni si Jaka na himong importante kay mo ni taga salo sa gingon na magkrisis ganita sa pagkaon labi na sa nai atong mga tuig nga nag murang naglisod ta og atong rice ya atong mga panahon pa to nay ari pa mga 60s mas ito 70s sana nga murag lisod ta During the Hispanic era a great famine caused by the long drought occurred. Consequently, all the green vegetation died and the new settler around the municipalities of Dawis, Panglao and Baclayon in the province of Bohol and other neighboring areas were starved and many died. In their constant search for food, someone accidentally struck a fleshy tuber in the ground. Some white and purple in color. The farmer settler cooked it and found that the tuber is very delicious and very nutritious. Naghang kayong istorya nga o mga taga kuno ang ube ato ng haukan o ato bang kanang tagaan o mayang pagtagad o hapit pa asimbahon kay aron dili na sila dili lagi kuno makagaba Dia ay makagaba jud ang ube kuno matod pa sa unang mga katigwangan pero og sa pagkakaron nga mga bag-o nang dekada among gi na tan-aw nga dili gyud di ay na mooy istorya kay ang og imong tan-aw nang istorya ang kadtong panahuna motong nga hagkan kay parang di jud hagbungon ang ube kay dali mangod si sama daot kay maunig kabunog sa ube ma masamad gani na gamay o kuan dali na si sama daot so kinanglan jud nga ampingan uh, the ube in bohol uh, is we consider it unique in fact in our boholheim 
it's the only crop that is being mentioned uh, in the lines of the Bohol hymn. And when we spell our spelling of UBI in Bohol, it's not the UBA, it's the UBI. Why? It is an acronym of the Unique Boholano Identity. Uh, more than 50% of the OB in the whole country comes from Bohol. Ang kinampay na ay aroma nga ma morag manumbay ba sa maglung agag kinampay mga bot yung silingan. Muna ay gi paka kanang kuwan sa Bohol gyan nga the best doon ang kinampay sa Bohol. Pagkuwata Ang estilo sa pagkuhat, balik unom ni siya ka bukas sa imong bundol. Karoon ma, kuwan niya, ang sakto nga, gidakon sa iyahang kuwan. Kuwan niya, mag, mag-spacing taong 60 by 60 by 60 centimeters ang in between hills. Muna ay kuwan sa yun, ay standard sa pagkuhan sa ube. Kuwan ang bato, karoon di makasagabal sa pagkuhan sa ube. Sa ako ang bahin unama makita ko kay maguwang man ko murag tulong na ka dekada nga gagambol ko sa pagtanom sa ube. Kay akong nakita nga hindi sa maong uh, root crop mo naa ang imong makita nga naa ang kuwanday sur sa imuhang kwarta mura kag uh, bangko nga naa sa sud sa walo ka buwan di bangko nimo ang imong imong kwarta pag harvest nimo kita ang kwarta tungod sa dima, pagka diman kayo ang ube uh, sa akong kabahin mura akong gi isip presidente pugo sa Bohol Ube Growers nagagama mig mura record sud sa uh, mga membro nga 28 ka lungsod sa tibok Bohol sigon sa among kanang dita nga gi banabana pod nang uban da, pero naadoy katinuuran ba nga moabot jud halos 30 tons ang maharvest ang tibok Bohol na way labot nang naadoy naon poy mga murag book in tawag na tog book in nga kanang nang gitanom ra sila ubi nga wa maapil sa among grupo mo nga sa pagkakaron gani ang among ubi karon murag di jud kaigo inang kanang makaingon mig di jud kay igo kay atong aging simana dehing tawag na wa ko kay bog asa tong address adto basta kay ang gibasihan nila ag UPA ako man jud kontakon kalingaw nangita sila 70 tons murag lisod man kadto i mo na nga lami gud kadto i encourage sa ubang mga mananumay o, o kanang wa papud butanom nga mananom tag ube kay asa man namo pangitaan ang 70 tons kuwang jud ang production sa ube sa Bohol Pisan pag unsaan namong paningkamot nga moabot ana usa na puhunan mo nang ugnay daghang puhunan na apoy mo mga batan-on nga mugambol og tanom ube nga matarungan na tog explain nga maune kaning ube mo kita Besides the struggle of beating the demand for ube the farmers in Bohol also deal with other challenges Atong itatanom ato na ning itanom ani sa nauma na manig kanang soil preparation so inig tanom na to ani atong Takiliron, kaya ron kanang sayon sa pagtubo sa ijahang pirmiro nga turok. Ingan ako na tukpurma, aron atong ilubong sa yuta. Ingan na, na tabunan. Kaya na magpaabot na ta, gano'n sana si Jamu Turok. Karong mga sunod mga buwan, maturok na na. Ang kalahian god sa kanang mid-scale o sa small farmer sa ube, is kanang inagmay lang ap ube minus na siya o kwan kanang dili wa poy usa ana wai piso sign ang utok ana kan lahi ag kanang mid skill na kay basta mudaghan na mudaghan daghan ang gamay mong ube mangining kamot na kag apil og seminar apil og kapunungan aron maka uh, mo involve na kag dinagko nga dako dagko nga kanang tanom nya dali aron dali ka maka baligya kay naa na manay og nasa iti ay pa kinahanglan ang maguuma nanay piso sign sa utok Kay og wa jamo kay piso sign sa auto ko gihapon gadi gi kampong gamo asinso. Once these challenges are addressed, there's so much economic opportunity with ube. Besides retail, farmers can also sell their produce to businesses that process ube. We took a closer look to one such enterprise which uses ube in their snacks and pastries by the volume.
um, Ube Kinampai is a much loved product here in Bohol. And it started when the uh, local government here in Tagbilaran City, um, they hosted Ube Festival every year. So they um, encourage uh, Boholanos to make different kinds of Ube products. We grow our own Ube and we also get it from our employees. They grow it in their, um, in their farm in the towns. When it's ready for harvest, we buy it from them. Besides from, from our employees, we also get it from the local farmers here in Bohol, also in Mindanao. We consume about a thousand kilos of ube every month. And what we do is we mix ube kinampai and ube halaya to get that nice color, nice texture, and a good taste. That's just one of the many ways medium to large scale businesses use ube in their products in conventional ways. But how else can this distinctly Filipino flavor be integrated respectfully while preserving its integrity? We sat down with Chef Joan Arciaga of Half Saints to know more. We, we celebrate um, local ingredients. We sort of challenged ourselves because most Filipinos know ube in its uh, processed form. The most famous processed form, which is the ube halaya. So if it's not ube halaya, then it's not ube. Parang they are looking for that certain flavor that they can only uh, taste from ube jam. That challenge is sort what sort of inspire us to, to make an all ube dish that presents ube in a different light, more subtle than, than what most Filipinos uh, know ube. If you take ube, uh, fresh raw ube, and, and you boil it, the, the flavor is earthy but it's very subtle. And that subtlety is what makes it versatile because you can um, combine it with different flavors but still get a nice um, dessert out of it. We get our ube from our local supplier who gets it from Nueva Ecija. So the ube comes to us uh, fresh. It makes the tradition of, um, for example, making halaya uh, sacred is the stories behind it. If we, if we make halaya in a different way or a more modern way, does it mean we lose the stories behind making it a traditional way? I think it will be inevitable for the method to change through time because as more equipment becomes modern, the approach may not be the same as how we traditionally make ube. But I think we can preserve it by making it from scratch, um, using less processed ingredients as possible, not putting artificial flavors, you know, making the ingredients stand out. We should take pride in ingredients such as ube because it's not only part of our cuisine, it's part of our culture, it's part of who we are. This is why um, we should continue this conversation for people to get a better understanding about ube. It's a lot of work and I believe um, as Filipino food advocates we are on the right track. But we lobby um, private and public partnerships for an in-depth research, promotion, preservation for Filipino food and gastronomy. Any country can grow anything, can plant anything. So we should make sure that we, we not only focus on the highest corn, mango, the usual crops that we export. We should also focus with the heirloom produce that we have. And we should highlight this because uh, nobody will plant it, nobody will buy it. it. It's going to die. Next thing you know, other countries will start planting it. Ube or purple yam, parang naging symbol na siya ng ano eh, ng, ng Pilipinas. On the artistic point of view, because I'm, I'm a visual artist, 
I know what color is. So, parang it it represents the unity of of the Filipinos because if you mix the colors of our flag, red and and blue, it creates purple or violet. No? So I think that that what that's unconsciously uh, or unconsciously we think of ube as like a unifying, ano, like special halayang ube as as like a, a unifying symbol. And then when you put like a yellow margarine on top of it, a yung ing sun and stars, no. For people to know about Filipino food, it's important for our ingredients to have a sense of origin. Every time ube is eaten, people should know it's a Filipino ingredient, just like how you have Japanese rice or miso. Not only will this make Filipino food part of the international conversation, but it will also motivate local growers and farmers to be more specific with what they're planting and take pride in their produce, which could lead to greater crop diversity and food security in a country that direly needs it. Thank <laughs> you.